people say to me, why do you want to talk about all these bad things? I don't want to hear about native genocide. I don't want to hear about slavery. I don't want to hear about lynching. I don't want to hear about segregation. I don't want to hear about all that bad stuff. I think there is a need for a cultural movement that pushes us to remember more. For me, it is about truth-telling in a way that is designed to get us to remember. And not just remember for memory's sake, but get us to remember so that we can recover, we can restore, we can fight to claim a different future. So there are a few things that uh, we think have to happen in this country that have not happened. Uh, in South Africa, there was a recognition that after apartheid, they could not recover without truth and reconciliation. In Rwanda, there is a recognition that there won't be recovery without truth and reconciliation. If you go to Germany today, you can't go 100 meters in Berlin, Germany, without seeing markers or stones or things that have been put in the ground to mark the places where Jewish families were abducted and taken to the concentration camps. The Germans actually want you to go to Auschwitz and reflect soberly on the history uh, of the Holocaust. In this country, we do the opposite. We're living in a region where the landscape is littered with the iconography of the Confederacy. When I look around and I see the iconography of the glory of enslavement and the era of lynching, I say we're not a very healthy place. And a lot of it emerged in the 1950s when people are talking about civil rights. This cultural movement was designed to make it feel like it was every white person's duty to fight against integration. And why did you come out of school? Because I'm not going to school with niggers. I don't think we've done a very good job in this country of understanding how vast and intense the opposition to civil rights was. I think the civil rights community won the legal battle, but the narrative battle was won by people who were allowed to hold on to this view that there are differences between people who are black and people who are white. And that's why I think this narrative of racial difference survived the civil rights era. I think we have to pay attention to the narrative battle. We've got to do better at creating a narrative that pushes us into a new place. I don't think we've created many places in America where we tell the history of slavery, or the history of lynching, the history of segregation, in a way that motivates everybody, black, white, brown, young, old, to feel inspired to say, never again. And that's the genesis behind this effort that we're now engaged in, to build a memorial and to build a museum. We divide the museum into eras. You have era one, which is on slavery, era two, which is on lynching, era three, which is on segregation, and era four, on mass incarceration. We call this a narrative museum because on this wall, we actually present a thesis, a story about the history of racial inequality in America. I want there to be repair in this country, not just for communities of color that have been victimized by bigotry and discrimination. I want it to be for all of us. I don't think we can get free until we're willing to tell the truth about our history. I do believe in truth and reconciliation. I just think that truth and reconciliation is sequential.
that you can't have the reconciliation without the truth. I feel like we're doing something important in Montgomery. It is a place where if we can show that truth can set us free, that means we can probably do it anywhere.